Good evening, everyone. Here we go. Yesterday, we stopped on this place where um, uh, Jesus was revealed to his disciples after his resurrection. Remember? Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, so suddenly, when he broke the bread and gave it to them, then they realized it was Jesus. And that's what they told to other disciples. You claim to have seen him too, says Peter. The women spoke like this, and now you. It's true, they say. We saw him. Of course, people do not believe that they saw him because they saw him dead. He died. Who have ever heard, who has ever heard of a person being alive again after dying? I mean, people stay dead. They don't become alive after being dead for a while. But then this person says, this was prophesied to happen. He explained the scripture to us. What if the women were right? We didn't believe them. Peace be with you, somebody says. It's you, they say. It must be a ghost. Who is there? It must be Jesus. Yes, Jesus suddenly appears in the room where all the disciples were gathered and says to them, why do you doubt what you see? Look at my hands and feet. Does a ghost have flesh and bones? No. Are you all so stubborn you can't believe your brothers and sisters? It's me. Does a ghost need to eat? I'm famished. Famished means I'm very hungry. We just made some fish for dinner, says Peter. I've got some for you. And so Jesus ate some fish with, together with the disciples. The Father sent me, and so I send you, he said. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive people their sins, they will be forgiven. If you do not, they will not. Where's Thomas? He's never going to believe it, they say. Of course, the doubting Thomas. He wasn't there. I wonder where he was. Who's reading the first part? Hitash or Atara? Which one of you volunteers? Hitash. All right. Jesus appears to the disciples. Let's read that part. Jesus appears to the disciples. The two who had met Jesus on their way home, ran all the way back to the city to tell the disciples that Jesus had risen from dead. When they got to Jerusalem, they found the disciples together in a room and told them that Jesus had appeared to them. While they were still speaking, Jesus suddenly appeared in the room with them and said, Peace be with you. The disciples were terrified, thinking, that they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus said, why are you doubting? It's really me. Look at my hands and feet and feel me. A ghost does not have a body like this. The disciples were amazed and filled with joy. Then Jesus asked, do you have anything to eat? So the disciples gave Jesus a piece of cooked fish, which he took and ate right in front of them. Thank you, Hitash. Second part. Did Jesus have a real body after he rose from the dead? I'll read. If you have stubbed your toes in the dark, probably happens sometimes, right? You're trying to, it doesn't have to be dark though for you to stub your toe. Whenever there is a chair or a table or a couch, usually people, especially those who are in a hurry, they stub their toes. If you have stubbed your toes in the dark or walked into a closed door, ouch, you will know that your body cannot go through a solid object. If you try, it may really hurt. You may wonder how Jesus got into a room with a locked door. How? We talked about it, I think, yesterday. The disciples were terrified that Jewish leaders would do to them what they had done to Jesus. They were afraid, they were scared. So they made sure no one could get in. That's why the door was locked. But even a solid wall and a solid door couldn't stop Jesus. Suddenly, there he was. Jesus was able to walk through anything. And yet, he was also able to, able to eat, speak, and hold things. He even had marks in his hands and his feet from the nails used on the cross. After Jesus had risen from the dead, he had a glorified body, a new body, a better body. And with this glorified body, he returned to his Father in heaven. And that's what he promised us too. That we would receive a glorified body, a new body, a perfect one. The one that never gets sick. The one that never gets 
hurt, the one that can travel through space like Jesus did, even through closed doors and walls, through new dimensions, I guess. I do not know exactly. I can just guess. Let's read the verse for today together. Ready, go. The Lord Jesus Christ will transform our lowly Lord body Jesus so that they will be like his glorious Lord body. Lord Philippians 3, 21. Yeah. And that's what it says in the Bible too. See, it says that Jesus will transform our bodies. Our bodies are lowly bodies. Our bodies, our soul is not made for these bodies because these bodies, you can, um, I think, you know, um, nobody ever thinks, I mean, people do not like thinking about death. People think that they are immortal. We can, we feel that we are immortal. We feel that this is just, this is not the end. Um, what do I mean by that? We see people dying around us, but we rarely think about death ourselves because we were created for eternity. Our bodies, our souls were created for eternity. Even though we live in these bodies, the lowly bodies, the ones that get sick, the ones that have problems, the ones that can get cancer, the ones that get old and weak, we know, we feel we, with our soul that there is something better than this. And this is what we have to look forward to. After Jesus comes back, he will transform our lowly bodies. That's what the Bible says. We will have new bodies. Isn't that wonderful? I'm looking forward to having a body that doesn't get weak or sick, that doesn't have issues, that doesn't get old, that doesn't lose hair, that, <laughs> you know... <laughs> Oh, new bodies will not have any pimples. Those of you who have pimples, look forward to having new bodies without any pimples. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yes. Yeah, I think that would be wonderful. Let me stop the recording. Would you like to add anything to today's lesson? Anybody would like to add anything? <laughs>